This All conference will now be recorded. For the meeting. And do we have any other, uh, uh, Councilor Foster is here as well today. Mayor Jennings is here as well. Mayor Jennings, would you like a, a seat at the table? All right. I'm here also for another reason. Okay. okay. I'd just like to inform everybody here today after uh, as the flood commissioner, I was just saying that our new uh, guy killed today. And <laughs> not don't be worried about that today during this meeting. You don't have to rush off. Today is not over. Right. Yeah. I've been twice, so I'm, okay. I'm really worried. If I could uh, l let the record reflect that the uh, councilors are here, if I could have an approval of the agenda, please. I have to make a motion to approve the agenda for the infrastructure meeting for May 21st, 2020. March 28th. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm ahead the of The agenda please for, go ahead. for yes. May 24th. And are we going to no, do no, my no, Okay, the agenda for today is for May 24th. We have a motion for the agenda and a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Uh, for the approval of the minutes of March the 28th, I did receive a, a, a message today from Ms. Rita Kane Dorhofer that said to please add that she was uh, present as well. So if that could be added to the minutes, do we have any other corrections to the minute? All right, hearing none, the, 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 uh, the minutes will stand uh, approved. Uh, before we go into any of the uh, uh, non-action items or action items, I just wanted just to read really quickly uh, just uh, um, uh, number one is to welcome Councillor Arnold. Uh, uh, this is uh, your first finance yes, committee. I'm, finance. I'm very, I, it has Thank been you. one more week. It has been one more week to the infrastructure. I'm used to saying the finance committee meeting, but the infrastructure meeting. And uh, uh, so welcome. It's my first time. Uh, it, I served all these years and have never served on the infrastructure committee. The closest I came, I was the chair of Business and land, building and lands for just a while, and airport and of airport for for a while. So, uh, so that's as close as I got to it. And then Councillor uh, Moore as well. This is your first on infrastructure as well. And Janine, you I was chair. Okay. For a while. So welcome back. I think it was, wasn't it? Yes, you were. Okay. You've been here. She's been here twice. This will be her third time. Just really quickly, I just wanted just to mention for everyone, per our governing rule of rules of order, section 2-43 of the Infrastructure Committee shall review and consider proposed actions that concern the fiscal, physical assets of the city, including vehicles, equipment, building, land, water, and sewer systems and streets. The Infrastructure Committee shall propose capital improvement plans. So that is the, um, what has been asked of us and uh, so we are here today and we'll move forward and do our best to try to get these things lined up for the city the best of our ability so at this time we'll start with non-action items the pro pro uh, project dashboard discussion lewis if you want to start us with that yes we could chairman with uh project dashboard for those of you new uh the spreadsheet that's in there we call that the, the project dashboard gives you a little uh description of where we're at money wise project wise and the 35 or so projects that engineering is working on. Uh, on the board on the presentation, the Honda River project is finished. Uh, Juan Salas was our project manager on that one. There's a before picture and an after picture. That's the Honda Trail is the one behind the Boys Club. <laughs> so we've got that done. We have a inspection from the DOT tomorrow. We're working on getting our reimbursements, but that one's almost in the books. Okay. And how far did that cover? The Honda Hotel covered from 2nd Street to Virginia Street. Second wow. okay. to, oh, I see. We're, we're, yeah, we're towards around. Okay. All right. And then some projects we got going, we had the West McGaffey project. We're putting sidewalk on both sides. Right now we're focusing on the north side. Uh, Thomas McIntyre and um, McAllister is our project manager on that one. He's new to the staff. This is the second week. He's our construction project, engineering construction project superintendent. Uh, so McGaffey, 
Again, we're putting the sidewalks once we get all the concrete done, we'll mill and fill it. And at this point, we're about 25% complete. Uh, the next picture on the right is the juniper milling on West Juniper. Uh, this week will be 50% done with the add-on milling that was added by council, I believe, in March. So we're rock and rolling with that. Would that be uh, a part of the, um, that's the additional from the, uh, the, the, from the GRT. Okay. All right. That, that will be going to be one of my questions. So anything that comes from that, I'd like to hear how that's going. Okay. Yeah, well, we're constructors did their stuff. They'll be done with that this week. We'll be done with that. And then uh, j and is starting their portion. And they'll be working on the south side by the base. They're doing Gillis. I think they paid Gillis today. Did they pay Gillis today? Um, no, they put in uh, that will be question. They pay Gillis tomorrow, person. Okay. okay. I have a question on Gillis. Who's it belong to? The street. Gillis. Belongs to the college. That street belongs to the state, to the college. Gillis Street. The one out at the base. The one in front of the. In front of Sydney Gutierrez, right across. No, 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 no. We're talking. We're talking Gillis Street uh, across from Malia. Along the state, from what I understand. Well, we've been maintaining that since the 90s. Let's check into it, please. Okay. Because a refund might be kind of nice on that. Okay, but I'm pretty sure we own it, but I'll double check that. Thank you. Uh -huh. What else? Yeah, Juniper, uh, the milling, how far did that take us down, Juniper? Huh? about a mile long. Wow. Yeah. So you got the whole stretch there. Yeah. He took it down, took all the build up down, took two inches below the curb line and two inches in lay. Okay. Steve. And I stand for any questions on any of the project dashboard comments. Report. So that, uh, so West Juniper right now and then the other street that you mentioned are the two that are out of the, the lawsuit money. Correct. Correct. Okay. All right. We've already we've already done Briar Ridge, uh, uh, Northwood, Lake. Wilshire, Third Street. They're milling, filling that this week. Uh, Lane. Gerald Lane. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Any uh, I had a couple of other questions from the dashboard, but is there any questions from committee members? Uh, this uh, the Spring River Trail Rehab Phase Two, and I know we're going to be discussing some of that here in a little bit. Um, uh, so let me, but the, the uh, yes, that one right there. Can you can you help me a little bit on that? I know the Cielo Grande Trail connection, but what is the rehab phase two? Rehab phase two would be just like we did on the Hondo and on the Spring River Trail. Uh, this would be fixing pavement repairs and an overlay. And that would run from Pennsylvania to Union. On the walk in my mind. From Iron Cross Park to Union. Okay. 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 And then we would probably in a couple of years when those funds become available, put in for another phase and slowly eat at Spring River Trail. Okay. The and Thompson Road widening, when is that? Is huh? the funding already? We're already we're already twenty percent done with Hobson Road. The widening Working on the show, yeah. It goes from where to where the widening. It goes from basically just east of the railroad tracks okay. to Wyo Road. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't come all the way to southeast. Maybe. No. Okay. That's a that's a so project to talk about yeah. fade on. Yeah. All the rest of it doesn't belong to us. Uh, portion which, which portion are you talking about? I'm like I'm talking maybe the south maybe Maine to southeast Maine to Wyo. Well, Southeast Maine is US 285. Not, no, the other part. Oh, the regular Maine. Yes. Yeah, that's ours, but we don't have any plans on that one for right now. Right. We were just looking at that to improve the access, but I understand the DOT is working on 285 realignment with the county. So we just got money from the DOT, and that's 95% reimbursable to do our portion to at least improve the access to the airport from the east side. Right now, that road is closed. Yeah, that road is closed. So anybody coming into the airport from wherever you're coming in, you got to come in, Main go down to the relief route. If you're coming from south, catch a relief route and come in south. Main. 
Okay, anything, the water, anything, did, did we do anything to fix where the water is flowing through there if we have flooding again? Is that hard? Did we add some more start drainage? No, I mean, one? all we did there with the drainage are our culverts there. But the flooding that occurs is more with the railroad and more in the neighborhood where you live. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> but yeah, but we have to, we didn't do anything to increase the capacity of those. Okay. Any other counselors have any questions? Nope. Councilor Foster, Mayor Jennings, do y'all have anything to add? Okay. All right. Moving forward to uh, our next items, the airport infrastructure update. And that'll be Scott Stark. Come on up here. Good afternoon, counselors. So I'll kind of start with, sorry, with this is the only picture we have, which is probably one of the best ones, but I'll start with the update of what we've been doing this last year. So our Alpha Julia project has been going on since last fall. We finished that up last month. Um, pretty sure we've gotten through all the grant uh, reimbursements and payments on it. Uh, if not, then we only have the closeout to do. Uh, but that came out well. Constructors did that for us. That was all together about a $3.4 million project. Uh, upcoming is the terminal parking lot project. That was a $2 million uh, mass grant project that had been in design for a while. We are 99% done with design. I think we're waiting for a couple of responses back uh, from some city departments to get that finished, and then we'll go to, go to bid with that. Um, next are two more MAP grants that total uh, $6.2 million together for uh, ramp maintenance on the concrete and asphalt parts of our ramp, starting primarily at the terminal. We'll be doing crack sealing and repairing any, any concrete that's cracked out there. Um, the, one, the first grant is, is probably about ready to go. I think we're going to probably try to, to look at, at doing um, uh, bids on both of those at the same time. So we get probably a better deal on having the, the construction done at the same time. But those should be coming sometime this summer or fall. Uh, if you guys see that's the ascent project. Um, Joe's probably got more up-to-date information on it than I have. I do because I've been out of, out of town for the last week or so and they had a meeting today too. So um, I'll, let, I'll let him address that. You'd yes. like me to, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. No, no, no. At this time, we went out for RFP in order to do the construction of the horizontal work the second time. Uh, it appears that those numbers are still over the engineer estimate by um, more than four million. So we will probably reject those two bids. We'll be coming forward to talk to the city council about entering into a project service agreement with the EDC and actually function like we've done on a project before uh, for this project. Uh, this is what the business is asking for. So uh, I believe it'll be ready and prepared for you uh, in time. We'll talk a little bit more about it. At, the, at I'll give a report on Thursday, but um, at the next council meeting, we'll talk about a project service agreement with the EDC and then tying up all the legalese that goes with that, that purpose. So we anticipate we're going to reject the two bids uh, because of the, the proximity away from the estimate. Uh, and then seek a sole source uh, provision for the EDC to assist us with the project from this point forward. And uh, if if all goes well, we anticipate, and, and the mayor was in the meeting this morning as well too, we anticipate that we could be under construction within 45 days is what we believe based upon what we were here if we're going any, any final little hiccups within that system. So. I, I had a conflict this morning, so you knew about that, but uh, since the mayor's in here, just want to say I'm, I'm fully supportive of, of uh, moving in this direction. I think that's in the best interest. Uh, so uh, I, I'm sorry I couldn't make that meeting, but I had a prior engagement that been playing for quite a while. Um, but yeah, moving forward. Uh, so, yeah, and everything in, the, um, everything in the blue is what is part of this project uh, on this picture here. A 300 by 300 hanger. Uh, it'll fit a, a, a really big large plane. Yep. Uh, and it has the parking lot on the access point. And then, of course, there's a lot of apron space in order to park the equipment outside of the building and moving in and out. So, but to this point, we've done all the, the demo other than one drainage call here. 
that will be left uh, to be done before that. But we're it's fenced off and ready to to begin construction. Fantastic. Any questions concerning this project? We'll talk about other airport stuff as well. But any any questions from the committee? This project, Councilor Foster. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Mayor. Um, could we talk a little bit about a couple of other things? Uh, no, number one, where are we at with the uh, with the water line going towards the east? So I think we're we bid it and we're waiting. We've already, yeah, we've already had a pre-construction conference. We're waiting on parts. Okay, fantastic. So that's going to get moving and getting done, going to the right direction. Um, where um, I know that we're getting. It was a fourteen. Fourteen inch. That's coming from the. East Tower, going around Earl Cummins Loop, and then down towards Building 91, and then out to the east. Wasn't it 18 inches standard size? In the no, the biggest size that's there in the base is 14 inch. Yes, sir. And uh, I know that we're getting close to that time to where Santa Fe is going to, I should say Santa Fe, the legislator. Uh, 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 the legislature going to be uh, opening up uh, the money that has been uh, allocated from the uh, this last session. Uh, so we are uh, looking at uh, receiving five million from the governor in that uh, uh, towards uh, these projects that uh, at the time Councillor Stubbs and I went up to discuss with her. So I think we need to start having those discussions about that because it's not. Um, I wanted to hold off somewhat because I knew we were going to have the collections and counselors and to see where we're going to go. But there are several uh, things to look at and consider. Has, has staff started looking at any of that in order to look at what those potentials could be for that? We have, and probably uh, I would I would say right now, and it's partially because of the the Santa Fe's focus on that uh, is the southeast area. The the water lines already beginning to go over there. We've already got it mapped out south. The other piece that we need to start thinking about if we're going to build anything over there is taxiways. And so if you stub a taxiway off a of taxiway delta on the east side and then turn to the north, um, you probably run out of $5 million and a little bit further north, um, maybe two hangar spaces is what you're looking at. And then you've got marketable lots that you can put those large hangers on. If you don't do that, um, then you know we're still basically trying to stay on the other side of the airport with anybody coming in looking well, for in, uh, in my conversations with the governor, in person with her and with her staff as well, we discussed at the time. I think the county was putting in uh, a five million uh, specified to the southeast corner uh, to move towards that direction. And uh, I went in uh, looking at a five million. She wanted us to be very open to jobs very quickly. Uh, and she asked if we had any projects that would that could create jobs quickly uh, and get people to work here in this part of the, of the state. So we talked to her about the dog house that was has been in consideration for some time. And we also talked to her about the rub hangar and the infrastructure needing to be taking place. She asked if we had areas um, that were ready for that that rub hanger to take place, and I told her that we did have areas that they could easily be taken care of. Uh, so I just I want to fulfill as close as I can to. Of course, I couldn't speak on behalf of the council and say that we will do this or we will do that. But when I went, I told her that we would definitely I would fight hard to ensure that that would be monies that were utilized to to uh, project ready things that could be done that could potentially bring the jobs very, very quickly. So um, I, I'd like to try to keep that promise to the best of my ability. Mr. Chair, I'll step in a little bit because I know the mayor was in a, in a couple of meetings today, all on this. The, the idea right now would be to pull the, uh, the brain trust together and determine, because we're not lacking for projects out at the air center. So it is really trying to make sure that, that those funding goes to the proper product at the proper time. We, you talked about the doghouse. You've talked about we have terminal needs as well too. Uh, that hangar, uh, we have the the building itself. We now need a pad in order to put that down. So there's more than enough work out there. But I think in the conversations uh, and and some of the statements that the mayor alluded to today is we need to sit down and talk about that and make sure that we're all moving in that same direction. So uh, I think we'll we'll come out of here and we'll try to we'll try to get those. Um, 
the brain trust into the room and start talking about all those and the uh, the good and the bad of, of which one which one does exactly what you're what you're hoping to accomplish. I, and that that's great. I don't have a problem with that at all. I do want to. I, I'm just one of ten counselors as chair of, of infrastructure, but I was just so heavily involved with working with the governor uh, to get that done. I don't want to, you know, just sort of be in left field on that. I'd like to be part of the planning and that as much as possible. As a chair of the lead infrastructure, we try to keep you uh, in front of the front seat. Right. Okay. So. All right. Anything else on the airport right now? So the other projects coming up this year that we don't have grants for yet, we have applied for is our master plan update. That's about a $700,000 grant from FAA. Uh, both of the grants this year for our entitlement money will be planning. So that's the, the master plan update being the, the largest one. Um, the other one is going to be a, a preliminary engineering report on runway 1735. Um, I think I mentioned to this group before that, that that runway is essentially the one that was built by the Air Force 50, 60 years ago and needs uh, needs some needs to be taken down to the dirt and completely redone. So this is the beginning process of that, doing the preliminary engineering report. Other than that, like like Joe said, there's no shortage of projects. If we wanted to talk all day, we probably could. Um, but that's what we have going right now. We're about to go into our, our CIP process for this year. So we'll be looking at what we have for uh, program got in the current sheet. We've got the one year, which includes those two I just talked about, and then we'll move we'll move it up. That'll become the next year, and then we'll be adding on to that fifth year again. So we'll be talking about what those what those priorities will be five years out, uh, coming in the next couple of weeks. Other than that, questions, questions? from Councilor Foster. Um, got a couple of questions. One, uh, where are where's Eric? Ergon on their they're building the road for us. Um, you know where the line better, but just from the looks of it, they they've got the grade done. Yeah, yeah. the grade's done. They should be paving within this within a week. Okay. Is that Jennifer Lane? No, it's Ergon Drive. Oh, it's Ergon it's Drive. New road. Road. Okay, okay. So since they're road. moving, it's a new road. Yeah, okay. uh, Ergon yeah. Drive, and then they'll meet up with Wells, and then they'll go northwest and do that little cul-de-sac by the paper shredder. Um, where are we on tear down of the old water tower? Waiting for Verizon and T-Mobile to move their stuff onto the new tower. T-Mobile has begun moving their, their ground-based stuff. I don't think they've touched anything in the air yet. So for us, you know, basically before, you know, we can, they're still paying so for the lease on the tower. So basically we won't terminate that lease until we get, uh, something from them and saying we're abandoning our equipment because otherwise we're liable for whatever happens. I know, but this was getting to a point where it was going to be an emergency last July and now we're in a year later and it's still, we're still waiting for that. So, yeah, well, it's, uh, Unfortunately, it's the communication system and I'm not aware of what that, all that goes on, but I understand. Unfortunately, that's the nature of the cell phone. All right. Um, the other, we do have a half a million for design of an ARF tra training system coming, or firefighting system. Um, I know in talks with the airport, we talked about wishing it, it could be at our training facility instead of out, but talking to the fire department, they're saying it probably does need the need of it to be at the airport. So um, when we start talking about the master plan, um, we probably need to start at looking at that. And that, that half a million will be coming to us in uh, July. So. Mm -hmm. Just keeping on the, you know, I've had some because because it's a, a state issue more than just a Roswell issue. I've had some discussions with state, state aviation as well, and so I think in the end, you know, we, we approach them at some point and and see what kind of skin in the game they want to have. I believe they will. So, well, and I, I no, and no. Half, to help build the whole thing, but the half a million to help the design process. Okay. Um, talking to the fire department, moving that ARC truck off the, you know out of the airport is is not something that's going to happen so um, it needs to be out there so that it can so that's where the training needs to take place too yeah. so um we have an index problem if, if we wind up with too much of that equipment off the airport you, right. you lose your index right so that that's the issue there um otherwise you find another unit that that can be in addition to the two we have 
Uh, well, but we've already got training. That's pretty expensive. Well, we've already got rid of the other uh, our truck that was out of date, and um, we couldn't update it. So, um, and so, um, all right. Well, those are those are my questions. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Mayor, do you have anything? A couple of more. I have a dumb question. What do you do with the water tower when you take it down? It belongs to the demolition company, which is in this case is Custom Construction. Part of the agreement when we bid the job is that whoever took it down would take possession because that was built in the 40s and there's lead paint on the, on the steel. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Anything else, Councilor Arnold? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I guess, Mr. Mr. Neb, when can we expect to maybe start having those discussions concerning the five million? Mr. Chair, we uh, we hope to start them fairly quickly. Uh, again, we've been working on the preliminary budget, and that's been a lot of time. So, uh, outside of that, I think the whole idea was to tackle these points at the next. I, I would say within the next thirty days to at least have one preliminary discussion on that. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, uh, next on the item, we have the trail project funding. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to please to announce that we did get two funds from the DOT from our applications. And again, this is just to let you know that we have the awards. We don't even have the agreement yet. We just got the award letters. Uh, one of the projects we already discussed would be rehab of Spring River Trail overlay from uh, Iron Cross Park to Union. The other one would be the infamous connection that we've already had various versions go up to council and put food back. But again, we'll be looking at again the difference. This time we would have money, more money to play with. But again, that will come back to infrastructure that will go to general services when we start the discussion again on what, what trail connection we're going to go. Uh, these are just some of the ones that we've been uh, going over. First off, two of those options have already been killed by council. So maybe we'll come up with another one. But we do have money now, 225000 for that, 236000 for the overlay on the Spring River Trail. And that's about it. It's so, so with the option one and option two is really where we're looking at more focusing now, correct? I would think so. I think you almost passed. Well, yeah, but... We thought last but I'd like to hear from. I know we've got some folks here. Who I'd like to hear from. I, I don't know. You talked a couple of times. Would you look? <laughs> I think you know a little bit about this. No, I, I thought by now we would have something a little more firm about where this wants to go across. The city's last option, which was Mississippi, turned out to be a dud. And uh, option one is the one that the Parks and Rec Commission endorsed, and we were willing to go with. And the numbers were too much. And then when this 235 or 25, or whatever the number is, came available, uh, I thought we were slam dunk boats, to tell you the truth. Nope, the alley, Mississippi, and Montana have all been shot down. I understand that. We've gone through this whole thing now for five years. The alley, five, five people, five occupants in the alley. Determine the rest of us 48,000, you're out of luck. So that's a, a pretty much a done deal. The only good thing about that was all you had to do is repave and, and we already had the connection across the street. And the paint this paint on Riverside and bingo bingo, we were done. You know, we're moving the goalposts again. I have a feeling. Well, the, the, here's the thing I need six out of ten to tell me which direction to go. And six I haven't. Counselors. And I haven't got that every time I go yeah. on. So, so let, let me interrupt. What's the problem with going off the bird sanctuary trail right up to the end of the uh, runway up to City Hill Grande? Well, that's the problem. You're talking about option one or two? One. 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 Yeah, so, Lewis, what is the price tag we're looking at? Well, option one requires the bridge. Well, if you go down. To the river, you can go the other direction. Well, I mean, we got option two this way, and there's other options, but if you cross the river, uh, you got to have a bridge. Well, a bridge or, or a couple of culverts with dirt on top. Well, they carry, they carry the lot of water. Ask the flood commissioner. 
So what if what what would option one and option two look at look like at this point? At this point, we probably have enough money to do option two, one version, paving it to connection. Option one, uh, you're gonna have to make it probably wide enough to get a maintenance vehicle and the traffic and rated for. But again, option one, you go along here and you're skirting with this property here. This is the church property. This is the other private party. But again, the church property will give you an easement. Oh yeah. To walk down there and then a couple of culverts. Well, the church, the church in previous discussion wants to do a trade. A trade. How they want us to have the land. Mm-hmm. And, and like and try to walk the property. They don't know which one yet. They don't know which one. That, but again, I just want to say that we've got the award. When this is the this is where we left off last time. If you're going by trial uh, process of elimination, you have one and two left. So, so let me just ask you: uh, uh, When did Parks and Rex meet to, to discuss and forth? A potential option one. How long has that been? It's been how long? I mean, six months. Yeah. In a minute. I thought we was done with that. Yeah. In general services, I mean, I don't remember. I thought we were done. Can I ask this? How long has it been since uh, option three was considered in shot down? 1842. <laughs> option three is probably two years. It seems like I go back to this every year. Option three was two years ago. So yes. Yeah. Sure three years it. ago, I was gonna say it's been a long, long time. Uh, and I don't even remember if I was in the council at that time or not. I, for some reason, I'm thinking I was not. It was during those two years when I was gone. Uh, but um, alleyways are still public ways. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, and they tell us we can't do it. Then? So yeah, well, there was a day. Uh, there was a day telling us of, of, of not. There was a request from those residents not to in the council. Uh, uh, those. There was a threat, a loss. And here, here's the thing: we come up with options, and this we might think fourth or fifth iteration. I cannot get six votes. So no matter what I take, I need six votes, and I can never get. Them. So well, it's a new. You know, it's new council number one, new committee. Uh, so this is our first meeting with the new committee, but I do want to hear y'all's thoughts. Which one was the hour? I mean, which one was? On option I think three. Four. Oh, so go ahead. Option two, this has been floated. This, I call this the gym option because this was Jim's option a long time ago. Uh, the only problem that we have now that it's sort of reappeared is that you would have people coming out of the bird sanctuary if this was a, a flyable kind of an option. And they would be walking east and you'd have traffic coming up behind them. And there's some certain safety precautions there that you know you're dealing with people who for the most part are just kind of generally stupid to start with. So they might just turn left out onto eighth and then poof. Uh, the safety element to us is something that we we're not entirely happy with. Although if it comes down to that and, and no other one, then fine. But see the problem with the, the problem with Mississippi was Lewis that you had gone, you said for a month to make sure there was no traffic, no cars, there was a white truck on the east side of Mississippi. And then the council vote is not nothing to approve it. And then the lady on the corner said I bring my truck in the car once or so and I can't I can't have a known parking zone in front of my house or on the side of my house. So the council went ahead and said, no, nope, you're right. Well, there was a lot, there was a lot more to it than that. Right. That was the general idea was that, but it, it was the cart before the horse because once you got voted on it, and then all of a sudden you went back to public input. Shouldn't public input come beforehand rather than get everybody's hopes up with it? I don't remember. I, I don't remember. Well, again, again, we've gone through all these iterations. You know the sequence. I know the sequence and I can get anything to council. I can't get anything out of council. Well, I understand. So let me ask a question though. Uh, is option two a possibility with going uh, across 8th Street 
at the Birch Sanctuary and then traveling east to the option two, on the north side. Option two, if you're looking at it, if you were to ask me, we come down here and turn right here where Nevada will be in the future. And then we take it all the way up to there. Is there a, my question is, is, this, is, is, is I, you're the engineer. I am not. I'm not the expert. Is it better to have them travel on the south side of the road here and, and, and move across here or to move across here and then travel on the There's north? There's not enough right away. And then the, okay. that property owner over there is not friendly towards the city. Any ideas how much either one of these is going to cost based on the current Department of Transportation grant? I mean, yeah, we, we, we can build this one. Would Jimmy, how old is this picture? Oh, God, six years. Yeah. It can't be that old because I have not see you, yeah, we, we, you can build option two. Probably build option two, a version of option two. Let's look at So, Mr. Mayor. You know, you know when you, I, I think you really need to look in a lot of ways when you look about going up there. Uh, going all the way to down by the churches and across that way on the far left. I think you really need to look about where the bank comes out. And my only reason for saying that is when you add an 800 houses down there, we took out any parks. There are no parks. There is nothing there for those children in those 800 houses to go. And so if you have them going all the way down here, that's a long way. At least Nevada, if you get them to Nevada, they are closer to where they can get to a park. It's Nevada. Yeah, that is correct. Okay. And if you see, all I'm saying is there's no park for those kids. And that, some end up, that's going to end up a lot of low-income housing to me. And when, just because of the design of it. And, and there's no place for kids to play. The streets are too narrow to play in the street. And, but, you know, they're 32 well, I, foot wide streets. I have a couple of things. Number one, I, I don't want to get off the subject with it. I've seen the development in Hobbs, and I'd, I'd, I'd call that a far stretch from, from low income housing from what I saw in Hobbs. I'm just looking about for the kids. Right. No, I understand. Whether it's low income or high income, uh, I think that the availability needs to be there. Uh, as uh, Sierra Brown is the largest park in all of Roswell. Uh, but, but Mr. Mayor, I see what you're saying, coming on down and moving it from, from Nevada, uh, cu cutting across from Nevada is what you're saying. Well, I, I don't know that I disagree I, with you at all. Because I'm just saying it's too far for going all the way to Union or whatever, Whatever it turns into in Montana. And, and it's just that's just a long way to get to park. And, and when you look at Seattle Brown, a lot of that stuff well, it, I, I, I was a different kind of park, you know. That was yeah, that's not a price. I'm a little confused at the fact that I, I don't have I don't know that I have a problem with option two is chosen to like you said, come up here and fly up here in Nevada. My question I guess I'm having is I don't know how. Uh, option two benefits or decreases benefits to the to the housing development way up north of here. I, I, that's why I'm getting confusion. It doesn't because all we're talking about here is connecting these two. Right. two. And so uh, there's no, I mean, there, it's not going to help anybody coming from the north down to Silla Grande. The benefits we're talking about connecting the benefits here are going to be uh, these that are utilizing that are coming from from way down here, using, utilizing coming across. These are over here in Enchanted Hills. The folks that are down here below Second Street that come up and utilize it as well. And I'm just saying that when I see that coming like that, you've got all, all those houses up there. And to me, those kids got to have a place to go. And if, if you've got all those houses, if they come down the van, I mean, at least that's where they can get to the, to the existing sport complexes and everything else is coming down here where they can get back onto the trail and go somewhere. Oh, if you're okay, right so you're saying that's why I'm going to stand getting back on the trail to go somewhere. Yeah, to go somewhere. All right. That's just, you know, that just me. Yes, sir. There was one more thing. Is there any, since two will be cheaper, probably, in the long run than one down the bridge, uh, is there any way, is there any possibility of any? plan to have any kind of uh, safety crossing 
there on eighth because you know they can rock it down eighth street like there's no no speed up. So we would have a crosswalk in the in on the in the safety stuff. And signage. And the signage, all that would be part of it. This is federally funded. Now remember, the grant is to connect the Spring River Trail right. to Cielo Grande. That's the that's, that's what the grant is for. Focused on. Yeah, okay. you're you're right in there. Yes. How long do we have to do this? Uh, haven't got the agreements yet. We just got the letter of award, and it's already interesting. We haven't even got the agreement yet. So you're telling me that three uh, is out of the question? I'm sorry, I'm, 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 no, 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 you're fine. Sure. So I don't think anything is necessarily okay. out of the question. I think that we can, yeah. can officially say that two have been rejected. No, three, have rejected. three have been rejected. One's not even on that One's drawing. Not even here. I just use this. I keep recycling the same drawing yep. just because it's been out for I'd six like years. Here, five and has something you'd like to, to share. Yeah. I'd like to commend uh, Lewis for actually getting to this point because. Option one had been submitted to the state of New Mexico Highway Department two times. The first time, the city didn't cross the T and all the I's and didn't put it on the ICIP list. Then the second time that the city submitted option one, they said you have to have a plan. And the council approved the plan. And Lewis will have some money and got a plan, but it's been a bicycle plan. So now, that, and I'm commending Lewis because he's hung in there in a very confusing situation. And <laughs> I would be more than happy to try and help you get the six votes. I really think because option two is, is cheaper and it's more direct than option one, if you could find a way, as, as Bob's saying, to cross 8th Street on option two in a safe manner, because what, I don't do much biking anymore, but when you're going with traffic, that's a dangerous situation sitting over your left shoulder. Uh, it was exactly the same situation that killed Judge Jones Absolutely. on the highway. Um, I'd like to hear from y'all on this. I, I'm just thinking out loud to myself. Another thing that I think that is good about the potential of option two and bringing it down and crossing up here, as, as the mayor was discussing earlier, is that keeps this piece of property from being divided for future whatever could potentially happen there. That's correct. With any money we put right. wouldn't be lost in the future. That's right. And option one, you're cutting off a significant portion of property here. Uh, that would, would never be utilized again. Cutting it here greatly depreciates the ability for this property to ever be used. Bringing it up here keeps it more in level of what we have and, and would, would allow for future development potentially. Do y'all have any thoughts on that? Uh, one thought is, you know, you need a new fence on the golf course. On 8th Street, it, it's a disaster. There's at least five to six sections that are broken. Option two will also add in the possibility, and I think the foundation would possibly be interested in financially, if you could improve option two to where the fencing also protected walkers and, and uh, bikers from getting hit by a golf ball. Uh, instead of a five foot fence, maybe a, an eight to 10 foot, People's golf balls from banging people in the head. Now help me out here. When you say foundation, uh, my my uh, my hearing aids go up. I start hearing a little bit. Spring River Corridor Foundation. Uh, okay, the Spring River Corridor Foundation. This is told that now the president. Okay, the just spoke with him just a few moments ago and congratulated him on the track meet. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you're some lot congratulated. <laughs> okay, let me hear from, from counselors on the committee. I still, you know, I guess y'all moved on to two, and I don't mind the idea of moving up, but I still, we got lawyers for a reason. No one could just should be able to threaten us a suit. Didn't we look into that before we put that option about the alley? So what? Somebody wants to sue. How many times does somebody want to sue you? 
I mean, Did didn't we look into that before we decided that that's what we was going? We voted on. I'm, I'm telling you, I've been on it. We voted <laughs> more than once. I don't understand because somebody comes and says they can't park their trailer. We already said you can't park your trailer there. So I don't understand why we have to keep rechanging. We have staff that can, can I, raise his hand to possible answer. Jim, did you want to respond to that? Sure. And it seems to be the way you're going to have to put a fence along the golf course line to keep people from getting hit in August. Yeah. So, so even if we move it to, if we, if we stay, if we went back to three like it were, yeah, the one we're still one cheaper than all of them. The LA would need a fence there also. Short edition. Short edition, and it's already cheaper. <laughs> you can have a knife. <laughs> Which were you talking about? Three. Because we had an issue when we all voted before. We voted on three. And then that the lady came with the suit or whatever. They said she was threatening the suit. But I thought we went through that. We went through that with the lawyers and all that before we decided on that. Well, that was the case at one point. Right. And then Let, me, <laughs> Let me get Maybe back to the minutes uh, to. to <laughs> just down the alley, that's what the road dinner right. to protect people from the golf course, same as going down 8th Street. So I know, but there was no traffic if we went that other way. We didn't have the 8th Street traffic. We didn't have, there was. If I'm not mistaken, help me out if, I, if I'm wrong. Did we not put the um, mm -hmm. the ornamental fence across the north side of the. The, the only place it isn't in, installed is along 8th Street. Say that one more time. Only eight. It does not go down 8th Street. It does not, okay. Everybody else has right on the fence. All right, let me, uh, Mr. Mayor. Is there, down there along there, is there any way you can make that alleyway only accessible to people who live on that street? So there might be people going down this one way and and only for the people who live on that now. Can I answer that? Yeah, just one more, let me let you. I mean, I'll just, if you can, they can go one way, and, and you still have to put a fence on. But I don't know. One of our one of our yes. uh, proposals on the alley, when it was first brought up, and there was no conflict at that particular time. And then the second house in, uh, coming from uh, uh, K Street. No, not mm -hmm. from Eighth. From yeah, from Eighth in the alley. And that, their complaint was there's no access to the alley, but they have a gate right there. Going out to the parking lot in the in the uh, golf course, we came back with, why don't we put a pole at each end of the alley, and give all the homeowners a key, so their pool guys or their lawn guys or whoever can come and open it up, get their trucks in there and do their business, and then leave and pull back. Trash guys, same thing. Give them a key, you know, give them a key. They can come pull, pull in, open the gate, do the alley, put the poles back. Seemed like a reasonable way to solve the problem, but we had those two homes with five people in them that said to hell with the 48,000 rest of you, we're not going to do it, and we're going to get lawyers. And our lawyers apparently just said, well, okay, fine. Oh, so, I don't like it. Uh, I don't that, like there, that there, idea. And that, that was a lot of it, but there was more to that as well from what I can remember. Yeah, just but, a uh, right. Let me just version. Councilor Council Arnold, did you have any comments or thoughts? No. You look Councilor no. Betts, yes. Councilor Foster, and then I want to say a few remarks. Yes. Well, you know, after six years of this, this is a bunch of bull. I agree with these folks over here. The easiest, safest, and let me say safest way is down the alley. Riverside is not traveled as much as 8th Street. It's safe. It's easy. It's perfect for the children to connect that way with their parents, because you'll see one parent in front, two kids, one parent in back. It is safe, period. If we have to fight a lawsuit for those safety of our citizens, I don't see a problem with that. I really don't, because it's safe. So let me let me say this. Did you have something, Mr. Oh, yes, um, one of the, but one of the options that we haven't really discussed. Um, I I am a proponent of having east and west access from Spring River and and yeah, really and so exactly. because I well and, but and I'm hoping that with our grant if it's enough to get option two done we might have enough to the other the option we haven't talked about was building a sidewalk on Mississippi. Because what, what the the parking issue was the issue. Well, if we built an eight foot 
sidewalk all the way up Mississippi, issue solved. Uh, they still would have people walking on it. And of course, they'll be upset that about that. The bicycle. They can ride bicycles on an eight-foot sidewalk. Yeah. That's they use that, that what they think is their easy to really Yeah, right. So, now, now, they will be upset with it, but they'll still have their parking. And, well, but, and uh, we're not taking away their parking, but they will they will gain. I would dare say, though, pro and I don't know, Councilor Foster, I'm not the engineer, but I would dare say that probably uh, an option mm -hmm. two or option three in the end is going to, because all of that, bringing that sidewalk, you've also got to deal with the ADA on one, two, three, four corners. Well, uh, you know, it, 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 and you're still throwing, doing it, though, but I mean, throwing it, kids into a street. Right. You're not putting them in the alley where there's no traffic. No, so I think that, they, I mean, but you're extending, we're walking down a street further to get to Wyoming, the alley in Wyoming. I mean, it's it's six one, half dozen the other. It crosses right, it crosses right if, over. If, if you're coming from the east and you're walking down Riverside, you have to walk further down Riverside that's all the way to Wyoming. That's the object of being out walking. Yeah, you're walking. I know, but you're on on the street. Right in the back. So let me let me say this because I think that we could probably discuss this all Forever. night long. And <laughs> yeah. this, okay, it's just, this is just this is just a discussion <laughs> item of it. But uh, I would like this uh, to get, get, let's get something accomplished. Okay. So I think that the committee has heard y'all's y'all statements very loud and clear. And I think that just for clarification, <laughs> if we were to uh, if our engineering department yeah, they voted for three, if right? our engineering department was to look at options two and options three to be able to bring back forth Bob, we would be looking at something that would be feasible. Yes, well, yeah. My only my only reservation is if we if we start to consider option three, we're going to run into the same wrangles. We don't care. We're we're we'll, we'll see what we'll see what happens. Here. We'll see what happens. But let's just uh two and three just consensus Revise that there any other discussion. Okay. Revise number two. Number I think we've heard and, and I think that we've. Uh, Gone as far as we're going to go without uh, beating a dead horse. So revise uh, number two and number three is what he's going to bring. Let's to look at right. that and just see what we have. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for that. Let's move forward to the next item. Um, the next item is going to be a regular item. It's for the ITB for the building demolitions on page 13. Kevin Mavers, please. Mr. Chairman and uh, committee members, um, before we begin this item, I do want to um, unfortunately let you all know as soon as this item's over and done with, I will be departing. We have the largest planning commission agenda of the year, which begins at 6 p.m. And my presence is requested. Actually, it's demanded, not just requested. So but let's go ahead and take care of this. This is the first ITB of the year. This is my annual visit to this committee. Uh, ITB 23-001 is for building demolitions and the award is custom construction two uh, for various citywide demolition projects. Uh, for those of you that have also been around, you know that every month we get a list of uh, proposed condemnations. Once the condemnation is done, we co of course continue working with the property owner. It's only as a last resort if that property owner does not correct the deficiencies out there that we move forward with demolition. So this is the annual ITB that goes out to our local. Uh, contractors for demolition services. This ITB was issued again to make available contractor to perform demolition services for various citywide projects. Next slide, please. Two proposals were received, one from Grand Corps Environmental of Albuquerque and another from Custom Construction 2 of Roswell. The apparent low bidder is in fact Custom Construction 2 and the proposed schedule of prices is available in your uh, packet. Uh, we do have one note here per Governmental Conduct Act 10 dash 16 dash 7. Uh, Anna Nieto as the CPO who was originally overseeing the project has chosen to abstain from the award process uh, due to the fact that she has a potential conflict of interest. A family member is a, a uh, employee of custom construction. Next slide. Okay. Uh, no financial considerations at this time. Legal is not applicable and the committee of course is asked to review, make recommendations and send to the city council for a full vote. Uh, so what's being asked of us is to approve 
uh, to send forward to council with a recommendation okay. to approve by TB 23-001 for the building demolitions. Um, it to um, constructors, custom constructors, custom constructors, uh, uh, LLC here of Roswell. Yes. Is there any questions or discussions from count, uh, from committee members? Councilor Arnold, it's hard for me to see. It drives me nuts that we don't have a round table. To... <laughs> so if I, if I do look over and you're trying to say something, please holler out because I'm missing seeing that sometimes. Anything else? Okay. I'd entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve the ITB. Senate full council for recommendation. I can't do consent. I was going to do that at the end. But. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, but we're, we're not approving. We're just recommending. Rec uh, recommending to go to consent. Correct. I, this can go in as a consent calendar item. Can it? Can it yes. Yes. Consent calendar item, yes. So it's not a motion. So I didn't no, 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 no. I'm just saying we're not approving the ITB. We're, we're, we're recommending to, to recommend them. Yeah, we have to make a motion to recommend ITB 23 001 building de demolitions to custom construction LL, LL, LLC to send to full council on consent agenda. Okay, second. we have a motion, we have a second to send the ITB uh, building demolitions, uh, to, which would approve custom construction uh, with recommendation. Any other discussion? Yeah. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Virginia Chisholm Park direction. Mr. Chairman, as uh, Joe has alluded to in meetings, uh, we have more project and funding, uh, so we're going to present the full project and the thoughts, and you're going to know more about this park that you wanted to know, but we want to give you as much detail as you can have. Jim Sexy, our designer, will be doing this. Jim also did the inclusive park, and Jim's going to be the lucky one to help me with the, the trails. <laughs> Okay, anyway, this is a picture of the Chisholm Park location as it sits right now. And this pine tree right here, uh, we'll talk about it in a little bit, but this is basically where the old Chisholm School used to be. You can go to the next slide. Um, Chisholm School was located there. The school was closed down in 2005 and tore down in 2007. The city acquired the land from the school system approximately 2013, not exactly sure on that date. In 2021, the state legislation gave the city of Roswell $400,000, and that 400,000, according to the um, appropriation bill, says for plan, construct, purchase, equip a park in South Virginia. Next slide. In August uh, 24th, 2021, we held a public input meeting at the local <laughs> out there. We passed these flyers out to all the houses in that whole neighborhood, invited them to come to the, the public meeting. We had a few items on the list to see what they wanted. We had a great turnout. Uh, Councilor Foster was there, former mayor was there, former um, city councilor Stubbs was there. We had Grace Frescas with the Roswell Police Department there to talk about Neighborhood Watch. That was a big concern on vandalism and stuff that goes on in parks that people are afraid of at nighttime. But we had a real good turnout, had a lot of good input um, in the meeting and everything. People, the next slide. Um, these are the input, the people that had the input. This is what the most they wanted, they wanted to save that existing pine tree because that was part of the Ch Chisholm School. They wanted a small parking area because they were afraid to park on the streets and have cars blocking their driveways and stuff like that. They wanted a recreation trail around the park to walk around and exercise. Uh, the playground, they wanted to be similar to Linda Vista playground uh, that's out there now. They wanted a basketball court, Picnic table, barbecue grill, covered shelter, park benches, trash receptacles. Have some lighting in the park because they were worried about nighttime having activities that they don't really want in the neighborhood. Um, they wanted an area for soccer and baseball practice. 
grass, and then handicap and accessibility. Um, they also wanted um, splash pad and all that. We told them that's pretty much out of the question. We've got a splash pad over on Southeast Maine that's not too far away. So uh, anyway, these are just a few of the comments that the majority of the people wanted at the meeting. Um, in October 21st, the City Parks Department ordered the new playground equipment that is the same layout as Linda Vista and uh, in the amount of $59,157.56. And this equipment is already uh, uh, stockpiled in storage, I believe, Jim. Yeah. And, uh, and anyway, this money was part of the $400,000 the legislation gave us. So the remainder is $340,842.44. The engineering department was then designated to design and put together a set of plans for the new park, which I was the part that did that, along with Lewis. And uh, anyway, the following slideshow uh, will show base the basic layout that we came up with. If you have any questions while I'm going through this, please let me know. Um, this is basically the playground equipment that came from the manufacturer. It's not going to be exactly laid out like it is, but it is the same equipment that was purchased. And the next slide. This is the same equipment here. Uh, the layout is going to be a slightly different on the actual plan, but this is what uh, play playtime, I'm guessing, or game time uh, actually submitted for the deal. There's um, slides and all this over here. This is an arch swing that goes back and forth. The kids can play on. This is another swing set here, and it does have um, a mother infant swing, so they can swing together. Uh, Jim, did you have a question? No, making a statement. Same one of Linda Benson, the exact same one we just did in Carson. Okay. All the interchange part. And the next slide, this uh, shows the layout of what's going to go in this park. It's a round circle instead of square, and, but it's the same equipment. It's just laid out a little different. Um, you got the swing set up at the corner there. This is the arch swing. This is the slide and everything. And basically, the pine tree that we were talking about, you'll see on the next slide, is right down in here in this area. Can you go to the next slide? This is the whole design. Um, basically, this is the playground equipment. This is the pine tree right here, uh, the, the existing pine tree. So I basically designed the park around that pine tree. Um, this is an eight foot recreation trail around the outside. Parking lot, there's two entrances already that's there with the curb and gutter that used to be part of the school. So therefore, um, we'll put some curb and gutter and sidewalk. Uh, the handicap accessibility, which was important to all the people out there, each corner will have a new wheelchair ramp. There will be a wheelchair ramp in the parking lot at both ends, another wheelchair ramp on that corner, back in the alley, a wheelchair ramp and wheelchair ramp. There's an existing sidewalk on, along Onyx and on Keith Street, and this sort of new sidewalk will tie it into the recreation trail. This is a, the area for the picnic table and the shelter. Uh, it just shows the concrete. This is the half court basketball court, park bench, park bench, park bench. Uh, there's some, I have solar lighting. Uh, there's six solar lightings, I believe, around the project. This out, outer area would be a zero scape area that would have swells in it to retain the water. And uh, it would just be crusher fines and basically uh, low maintenance, zero escape. All the green area would be the irrigation part. Uh, that would be all the grass. You, there is room to put a backstop here for practice on baseball and an area here that you could put some soccer goals in there for practicing soccer goals. That is not included in our estimate and also the park benches, picnic table, covered shelter, and trash receptacles and barbecue grill are also not included in the estimate that we're going to talk about. Um, and also, 
the installation of playground equipment is not included in the estimate. So if you go to the next slide, mm -hmm. if anyone has any questions on that, the layout. Um, the engineer's estimate for this part is $751,445 without gross receipt tax, $810,308 with gross receipt tax. And like I said, this does not include the playground equipment installation, and it doesn't include park benches, picnic table, barbecue grill, trash receptacles, covered shelter, basketball goal rim, and backboard. It does include the concrete for the shelter, concrete for the benches, and the basketball court. Anyway, we have $810,308. If you subtract the funding that is left after the playground equipment was purchased, it comes to $469,469,400. That is a uh, shortfall. shortfall on this project. I think you can go to the next slide. The following slides are basically the plans that I put together to go out to bid. And uh, we'll just go and show you what details there are to get this thing. This is basically the code sheet, shows the location of the project for the contractor to know where he's looking at. This shows all the sheets that are in there. There's 13 sheets in the plans. Next slide. These are all the general notes for Please all. Don't the, read all that. <laughs> those are all the general notes for each item. Um, these are the, all the items that are in here. The general notes pretty much cover all the items in there, along with many other things. Lots of notes. These are all the different items that are in this project that we have to go out to do. The grading out there, um, we do not know what they took out and left and all that. Um, there's a lot of rocks, a lot of debris, a lot of um, this area here has kind of a high spot in it and everything. This is the finished grading plan where you go in and grade the whole thing down, excavate down after the finished grade, excavate down eight inches bring in new topsoil. That way we're, we know we got good topsoil in there for the grass and everything. That's included in the estimate. This would be the parking lot. You'd have to excavate down, put new curb and gutter in, and uh, that would be the parking area. But Jim, can I ask a question there? So we're excavating the whole property. We're not, the playground, the, the back half of Basically, the the Green is what I have excavated down eight inches. Okay. But you will have to excavate the parking lot area down also. So that's included on the unclassified excavation. And then you have all these swells out here that would have to be excavated too. But the eight inches of new topsoil is basically what's shown in green. It does overlap the zero scape a little bit. But I figured it'd be easier to you just go in there and excavate a square, then trying to cut this whole thing out exactly. So the green well, that's part, right. I mean, we know that prior to the, the everything being demolished, the back half of that was a playground that had grass. It it is, but if you walk out there, there's a lot of stickers, there's a lot of rocks. Uh, there's I mean, it hasn't been watered. Right. And, so, yeah. therefore, everything that's in green would be the eight inches of excavation and eight inches of new topsoil. The other thing, Council Foster, is if you're going to build an irrigation system, you got to build it for the entire site. So, you have to excavate the entire site. Mm -hmm. We're looking at a full site set of plans here. Where was the previous parking? Wasn't there some parking lot? Uh, there was. Was. There, it's right there already. So, you already got to excavate. No, that when they tore the school down, they, they built it all in. Oh, okay. yeah. And there's some old trees in there and stuff, and that's part of the removals. Uh, there's a couple of old trees along there. <laughs> you can see these circles right here are the old oh, trees. trees. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that, that's why that part does have a little excavation. It, it's not major, much, okay. but it's got a little excavation. In the next slide, that's just the cross sections. Every 50 feet from the park, that's what determined the quantities for the excavation 
and all that. And uh, it, it, that's hard to read, but a contractor needs to see that to build it. This is basically the um, plan that we saw earlier. This is just a basic plan. It shows the dimensions of some of the items and stuff in the parking lot. Same plan that we saw earlier in the next slide. This is the same plan, but these have all the GIS coordinates for the contractor to go out and lay out the whole thing, including the tree locations, the location of all the corners and all that, so they can go out and lay all that stuff out while they're building it, instead of going out and measuring curves and all that. So that's what this sheet is here. And the next, these are all the details, wheelchair ramps, um, in the corners, um, the basketball goal of the basketball court has a thickened edge around it, so it's just not four inches of concrete on the outside. It will be four inches, uh, the rest of it will be four inches. It does have woven wire reinforcement in it, fabric in it. Um, this is just a detail of the asphalt in the parking area. It would be two inches of asphalt, six inches of base core, and subgrade prep. Then there's a full box, and then in order to get the irrigation, we have to have power. So we got to put in a electric meter pole, and uh, that's part of the project. Run conduit over to a service panel, and then go into the control uh, mill for the irrigation. So that's just the detail sheet there. Next slide. This is the irrigation plan. Um, all the different colors or all the zones that are in this um, basically, this is where the water is going to hook up. The city will hook up the water, put a four inch water meter. From this point on, uh, the contractor, ever who gets the irrigation, is responsible from there all the way through. There's a four inch water line, kind of hard to see, but it's this blue line, runs all the way around. And then there's a two inch water line on both ends. The two inch water lines for the drip lines that has a drip line through all the trees and shrubs on the whole project, including a drip line around the existing pine tree. Um, the four inch is where all the valves come off of for the sprinkler system. Uh, the next slide shows that. Jim, on this one, how many sprinkler heads are there? I couldn't read it from you. Sprinkler heads. Um, Go to the next slide. On the next slide, I think it shows the sprinkler heads. Okay. No. These are all the different sprinkler heads. Uh, you can see the circles are the sprinkler bills. Uh, there's sprinkler heads all along the trail, so we're not watering over the trail. And basically, that's what it's all fed up to water away from the trail. I'm sure someone's going to get on the trail, but um, I can't. I know there's 42 stations, um, con station controllers, the valves. The sprinkler heads, I thought I had it somewhere. Um, it might be on, it's part, the irrigation is all a lump sum bid. So uh, we don't have to I'm, have, uh, my question, the reason for that is there's 32 stations and all that. There's 2.7 acres here. Um, how many stations do we have at Thunder the Vista Park? I think when we looked at it, it was 32. This one had four. Oh, it was Delta West. Oh, it was Delta West. And so it's 10 acres and it has 32 stations. And so we've got 42 <laughs> built into this one for 2.7 for a quarter of the size. I mean, I understand it's, it's lovely layout. It's beautifully designed. But it just seemed in excess. I, I did meet with the parks department. Uh, we had Rudy and all of the guys that work on this stuff. They met with us along with Jim, and we discussed the whole design of this. And uh, basically, we there's not no more than six sprinkler heads on each valve, so there's plenty of pressure for the whole thing. And that's basically where we came up with the 42 different valves. And it's a lovely design, but what I'm we have, we're dealing with 340,000, and we're de designing to for 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 
way more than that. And the vista basically does not have a recreational uh, trail. Does not. It's just a roadway around there. Well, and and I and, and my quote was actually from Delta West, which is actually ten acres. But it don't have. I I am. Uh, you got You can stick it. Some sprinkler down there and water everything, but even when you're walking up the shore, you're going to get wet. So, well, um, well, I understand that, and it's great to design to that degree. But when we're dealing with three hundred forty thousand dollars, we're dealing with three hundred forty thousand. So if you deal, if if you want to come up with the extra half million for us, that's great. But the estimate for I have on the irrigation is one hundred thirty thousand. It's a lump sum bid. It includes water lines, sprinkler heads. Valves, everything. So it's red, is that whether there's 32 or 52 sprinkler heads? Yes, it, it's a lump sum bid. So no matter what, no matter how many there were, it was going to be that 100 and it's whatever. Going to be close to that, it's going to be bid out. It's going to be bid out. It's going to be whatever we get the bid for. But right. what I'm what I'm trying to push the design is keeping the numbers there's more design in this than there was in the 10 acre part. Go Okay. Were you no, no. Councilor <laughs> So the design of this is what the neighborhood asked for, for one thing. They wanted the walking path. You take out the walking path, you can use less sprinklers, probably less stations, because you're not having to cut it all up. They are getting exactly what they want. The taxpayers are going to pay for it. We're going to have to come up with the money somewhere if we continue on. But you've got a lot of added stuff in here due to the fact that's what the neighbors want. So your walking path, you're going to have to cut that up because you don't want to water the path. You're going to end up ruining the path in the long run if you water it. So that, to me, is why you've added the extra stations to cut it up. That's my, per that's my personal opinion. If it's a regular playground park at Washington Avenue or someplace that it just squirts all over, there's not an issue. There should be less stations, less this, less that. This is all arborist that have put this together because you, if you go to the next page, you've got your trees, your type of trees that you have, your shrubs, you know, your shrubs, each one takes a certain amount of water. And Jim knows that. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, I understand that. But, but this, this one here does show all the tree location, all the trees. Uh, this is the type of trees that were determined by the Parks Department that seem to be growing the best in, around here. These are the shrubs, and every shrub and tree will have a drip system on it that will can be regulated Perhaps. with the. Well, there's 21 trees. We can put a salt seed or not. So, so we have no salt seed. <laughs> I said they won't need water. Let, give me just a, a moment real quick. Uh, Councilor Arnold had her hand up. Is it, is it part of this discussion or is it another question? It's not part of the trees. It's part of the previous. Okay. Um, my question is, I was actually the other day, I was trying to think about whether the south side has a walking park. Right, well, yes, the, yes, the county put MLK. One. What's it, MLK has a walking trail. And the county put the one county up around their building. Is, that's around where? Uh, MLK Park. That's Martin Luther King, King Park is to the south of Monterey. Uh, okay, right yeah. um, okay, because that's kind of my concern. We don't, uh, you know, there's a lot of trails in the historic district and in the center. And a lot of my concern was, you know, even on that east side and down at that's what I'm understanding. This is that correct? Yeah, this is, this is on South of Hope between uh, South Main and South East Main. Okay, and so, yeah. Um, so there's not a lot of access to health stuff or um, anything like this in that area. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Your lighting, can that not be donated by? Maybe that's all of that. No, they, they're part of this. Your EOT and your ADHD handicap rails, can those, can the, it's for eight, whatever, can those be donated by EOT? So I understand where Barry's going with, with the expense. I get it. I understand it. But you're the one who also wanted this part. Well, so I can ask other legislators to donate some of their money, but also look for grants. 
are all the trees coming from the Roswell nursery or whatever you call it? Or are they going to be donated by? Uh, that's trees? part of the bid. Uh, also, the trees are a lump sum. Trees and shrubs are a uh, lump sum special item. You have 21 trees up here. Um, from the 60 some shrubs. Um, the shrubs are one bid item, the trees are another bid item. So the contractor will have to furnish those. So I think what I'm asking is, and, and Lewis, get me if I'm wrong, we need to ask for grants. We need help on this part from the community. Can we go to Westlake and get the trees from them? And like the shelters and all that other stuff, we were looking for sponsors for the shelters, very similar to what we're doing with Inclusive Park. Mr. Chair, uh, and, and I don't know if they got that built in there. We were looking at how to, how to tighten this project up because we believe that there will be people that will help support this project. That's why the benches, that's why the shelters, that's why some of that infrastructure is not in there. We are hoping to find sponsors that will help place that infrastructure in there. The challenge we have, and the reason that it comes to you in the format that it is, is that just the infrastructure alone is still over the amount that we have, all of these improvements. So trying to trim that out, and uh, I guess my marching orders of what I had asked the, the staff to look at as well too, this park has to be functional from day one with whatever we put into it. It has to be functional. It doesn't have to have all the bells and whistles right away that the public was asking for in that area, but we have, but it has to be usable. And then at that point in time, then we can start adding those pieces. So like the, uh, the basketball court is not in this estimate. That's the irrigation. Is that correct? The, the court, the slant is, but not the basketball goal. Okay. Yeah. So, so the basketball goal, so the, the concrete or the asphalt will be there, but It'll, it'll just be a hard surface. You can bounce basketball, you just can't. <laughs> uh, but uh, the, so the barbecue grows, the trash receptacles and everything. We are hoping that we can. Uh, and that we've seen that taking place place before with uh, yeah. the anonymous with um, mm -hmm. uh, who took care of the park. Uh, uh, Councilor Stubbs is. Uh, uh, All three cents. All three cents. So did a phenomenal. But the, but the and water Delta system West, is necessary to. Stain, so what I, is there? I ask a question real quick? Go go back if we could for just a moment where you you've got the okay you got the trail. Uh, Look at that. I love the trail. I, I love the trail too. Mm -hmm. But my question is, and I don't know uh, how much change to it because you have sidewalks here, you have sidewalks there, you have sidewalks there. Of course, nothing here at the alley. But what 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 change does that make? And I'm trying to okay, to take small, it out and just strict, because strictly because the change of this right here, as beautiful as that is, getting that out of there now, your are going to open up your sprinkler drastically change. Yep, because you're not trying to do all this. Correct. In, in the in the interest of going fast forward, give us okay. So we have one estimate of eight hundred thousand. The next estimate. What we call our bare bones is 544,000. Explain to us what the. Uh, that would be good. Thank you. Yeah, what did it take back for? It's basically eliminating the concrete recreation trail, okay. um, eliminating the basketball court, now, um, basically eliminating the shelter. Uh, the bare bones would be, I don't have the asphalt parking lot. I still think you need to put the curb and gutter in here, this sidewalk and this sidewalk in, and um, the area for the playground equipment, but everything else has is eliminated off the bare bones, including the trees, shrubs. The irrigation is a must. If you're gonna have grass, you gotta have water. But irrigation at the same amount? No. Um, it could change a little bit, but if you ever want to come back and do something like this, you're going to have to revise the irrigation big time. Yes, Jim, you can probably have the trees no matter what. Yep. Well, if we don't have the trees, we need to put it in. Yes. Put a stake there or something for a future tree, but I'm just saying eliminating the bare bones. Um, I'm going to help Jim here. 
We're not going to use the word eliminate. We're actually we're using the word postpone. The 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 idea is, is that we have to pull this but the pull this project into the budget or as close to it as possible. I, I think with with where we're at, in order to take out some of these amenities, which can be coming, they they could be put back in there if we have the sponsors or if we have the individuals to help do that. What we're talking about is that with the city has this much money in order to make the park functional at that point in time. Um, we're hoping that the community will help support putting in all those other pieces. That's where I would say, I, I, I'd cite with Jim there as well too, that put the irrigation in the way it's supposed to be, and we can come back and do a pathway at, at some later date if necessary. So give me a postponed number. Uh, that was 500 and 545,000. And Mr. Chair, one, one of the things I was trying to find was the, the email we've gotten that show also the excavation being done by our, our parks department and the irrigation being done by our parks department. And I know, yeah, go ahead. Joe. Yeah, really, really quickly on that, the, the challenge I have when we're doing the work in house, which means that we are no longer doing work that we were scheduled to do. But my next question, statement is, what are Fridays for, Jim? What do you do on Fridays? projects yeah. so we do projects anyway on Fridays with our crews we're, we're not talking the whole crew but we're already yeah. doing a special project well wouldn't this can be considered and counselor, you a project? and I had to discuss that there is the possibility of that but the the high idea is that the cost is still there we're just eating it differently than what the, how to do that so there's no problem with utilizing in-house staff to do the work but know that the impact is something another project doesn't get done that day it's, right. it's a project that we're adding on top of it that's that's replacing a project that they may have been scheduled to do i understand yeah. but but and that's my my thing i've been working on this for six seven years now um we've had this property i thought my estimate i was sold at one time we opened it we bought, bought it in 2007 from the school. when the school was tore down, so I don't know if we got it right away. They shut the school down in 2004. They tore it down in 2007, and right shortly after, we uh, we were acquiring it to become a park. Um, the parks department had said it because that prior to that, we were talking about buying the land from um, the the Elks just down the road and building a park there. And they said, wait, the school's going to get torn down, shut and torn down, and we bought it. And we've sat on it since then. One of my recommendations, Mr. Chair, would be to uh, find a way to fund the the bare bones version of this at 500. And that's what I want to get to. Your recommendation is to find another two hundred thousand dollars, and we can utilize that out of the, the cash on hand from the American yeah. Rescue Plan money. Okay. And that was what I was wanting forward. Yeah. Get, let them find where he's the going. The next slides are just showing the details of the electrical stuff and all that that's part of the plans. Uh, show the service panel. That's this irrigation stuff. That's all right. And yeah. uh, then it does require a backflow preventer. That's part of the that's project, fine. and that's what that is. So that's the end of the plans. And basically, that's the summary. Okay, so so, and then the next slide shows you um, 400000 Playground equipment was 59,000, the remaining funds. The time frame is June 30th, 2025 on this group's on the legislative grant. Um, the engineer estimate for the whole thing, besides the, all these items here, is 810,000. Uh, basically, the shortfall is 469,000. That's the full part without these items. Then the next slide, that's it. Yeah. The, the, the thing I want to point out on this slide, we have till June 30th, 2025 to build it and close it out with the grant that we have. And we have a public that knows we have, we've had the money. Yeah, we have till June. So, so we, let me say one statement that I want to, Councilor Moore has some, our, our administration has said no. Uh, find from what I'm understanding 200,000 from 540 to we've got 340 left. If you're looking at 540, we've already got the playground equipment and get and get going from there. Okay, my so, only thing was is or did 
if I want to include the trees in the whatever our little, how much would, did you say how much the trees were? Who wants to park with no trees and no shade, no sun? If you're not going to be in the shelters and all that, at least put the trees in. I feel like at least if we put maybe not 40 of them, like there's a lot of trees and bushes, but at least put some tree in the greenage, you're going to spend in all that water, you're putting the insulation in there. To me, I sure. think we should start. Yeah. The pine tree. Counselor, uh, the, what, what I'm in this recommendation is, is that if we can do the bare bones as a bid project and get that project going, we also start the, the request for donations and sponsorships of the individual pieces that we are not covered. So in my mind, we do an all call. Is there anybody that wishes to place a memorial tree? Here's the price to put that memorial tree out there. You get a nice little plaque with it. Uh, you got the tree. Same thing with the benches. Same thing with some of this infrastructure. Jim and his crew will do everything that they can to help pull this price down with everything. We're not saying that we're not going to plant trees. What we're saying is that we want to go and find sponsors to do the tree rather than the city. Yeah. So that's what I'm, I'm asking to, to try to work with this one is, is that we take care of the bare bones stuff. We, we make sure that that park is actually uh, a good piece of ground that can actually be utilized for a park. And then we go after the amenities with this, the trees and all that other stuff that is very simple to do one at a time or three at a time. Well, all we really it. got money for was green grass because that's, 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 that's all I see. That's all I, that's all that's there is. That, that, is there be, I'm serious, there's there be trail, green there's grass, no, water. Oh yeah, no, there's five pieces of yep. uh, playground equipment, but there's five pieces of playground equipment and some green grass. And I, I, I understand the, the, the numbers and I'm okay with that, understanding, breaking it down. I, I'm not I'm not fussing about that, but I just, we keep saying we're gonna do something and, and our problem with our city, I feel like we keep having, half ass and stuff. And if you're going to do, I have to see, you know, there is a <laughs> pressure on the right. Sorry, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> behind and stuff. Yep. And, right. and, and then, and then, or we say we're going to do something, get back to it, and then we didn't, we never do. And so that's, that's kind of where I, I understand the money. I do. I promise I do. And I'm okay with doing it the way it should, but I just want us to get to it yep. if we're going to get to it. And you're, and you're correct. And, and the, the, the problem I have, and this is the conversation we actually had. I don't want to call these uh, uh, phases because I don't know if we go back and see that because it is really based upon who's willing to assist us with this, this community service or support, or is the city going to fund it themselves? And I think that's the challenge we're in is finding enough money to fund for a park in that, that size, in that area, because we have all these other needs in these other parks as well too. Yeah, but this is, this and, is, and we're going to have to maintain this park as well too. And you can see the things that are in the parks that we have not maintained as well too. So right. let me uh, uh, let me call on let me call Councillor Arnold. She's been. Oh no no, it wasn't asked. She was, she was well, I did have one. I oh. did have one question. It's really really quick. Does does the Kmart version have the uh, uh, Kmart gauge? version? Yes, you have anything yeah. underground. You have to put in. You have to put the irrigation, the grading, the dirt. That and because that way, but I want to play off you. I want to play off you saying about the irrigation. So you're going to have the Kmart version of the irrigation, right. but yet you're thinking about putting the walking path. So how are you going to do that later? I think they explained what they had to do. The irrigation be as 100 percent. That's when we have the GPS. So we can go in there and, and put it precisely where it's supposed to go. Keep in mind, Square Park has nothing over there up northeast of town. It has no parking. It has one or two trees and a couple backstops. So, All right, so on that side. Let me, let me ask Mr. Burrs. Yes, sir. With the irrigation, we just sent our tree spade for maintenance. <clears throat> We're getting ready to take the fence down at the tree farm. I got trees to plant. So I got water and dirt, and I get my tree spade back. We're going to be planting more trees in the parks anyhow. So okay. you're going to be getting to it. They have a place to do it and they get water. I got to put trees somewhere. Nice. And they'll survive. Yeah. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. We got yep. about an 80% survival rate so far so, that that pulled out. And on the walking trail, I've already talked to Job Corps and they're interested in, in partnering. In, I mean, they have their facility maintenance that can build walking trails. And that would be a nice project for Job Corps. And the community so, too. So, uh, uh, Mr. Neb, you're requesting for this committee to send forth the full council. The 200. You guys are comfortable with that as well, too? We, we do the 540,000. We, we do the second option on there. We pull this back to 
essentially a bare bones. Uh, and, I, and I feel like we have to do that. I, 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 I don't want people leaving this room thinking that we're having to take, a, we're taking away, we're taking away, we're taking away. The project, you know, at the very beginning was, wasn't going to be a million dollar project. Right. You know, or however much you be perhaps covering that whole area. So right. that it's, and then that, because it's historically a, right, this is in the triangle. Those kids have no park whatsoever to play with. But there are ways that we can do some things and and still get them what they need. So, and for instance, uh, I know that we there's there's temporary backstops that during yeah, baseball baseball we season we can put in. We can take no, those can. out there during the season. That kind of thing can be taken care of. A a, a basketball a court added later, I would think. You know, kind of thing. Mr. Yeah. Chair, I, I, I also agree that I, I don't want it to be looked at as we're taking away. We're actually building a very good foundation to move it forward. Yes. It's just that we don't have all the pieces today for that. And what we're hoping for is the sponsorships and the, and the individuals that will help make that the job poor thing and something that we talked about for doing sidewalks and everything. And for long Yep. So we uh, love all those ideas. But set that park up so that it can be uh, prepared. Let me ask what Mr. Burst. He said, "Guys, right hand raised, and I will entertain a motion." One thing, just for you, everyone. We're always putting in picnic tables, benches, and trees, and bushes. And so I got a, I got a chunk of dirt that has water to grow something. You know, we got good crews, and, and like to your point, you find someone put in a picnic shelter. We're always putting in backstops and things like that. We just ask the coaches where they're at. We put in soccer goals. Where are you at? That's right. Yeah, where do you want them at? Because we have to take care of everybody. So, okay. they ain't nothing but a thing. So I'd entertain a motion, and I think that what it is, we've got a we've got a current amount of three hundred forty thousand eight hundred forty dollars and forty four cents. If I've done my math correctly, it would be what was uh, the number we need? Their would be five forty five. Five forty five. So, uh, so, so that would be an additional two thousand five, two thousand, two hundred and thousand, two hundred and five hundred and five thousand dollars. Okay. okay. <laughs> yes. Something that does not include is installation of the playground equipment, which is estimated at seventeen thousand. Also, that's not included in any of the plans that I've shown. The estimate on installing the equipment that we already have in place is seventeen thousand dollars. We do have a five sixty two, but we do have a budget that can take care of that. So don't include it in the. And we can if you want to, Mr. Nab. Just follow follow the estimates and stay with the estimates. Five as Mr. Burns alludes to, we'll be able to do a little bit of magic on top of that. I'd entertain a motion. Five hundred forty-five thousand. Yes, sir. Which would be an extra two hundred five uh, from what we're at. All right. So I'd like to make a motion to um, send to full council. Um, let's do it on consent. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Virginia. Virginia. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean that. To send the full council of Virginia Chisholm Park. Um, I don't know, you want direction? Project uh, to full council for 545,000 and a couple of pennies. So. 540,000. 545,000. 545, yeah. Okay, we have a motion. Second. We have a motion. We have a second that we send a full council recommendation to, to take uh, and add to this for a total. Uh, in addition to what we have here to make an end total of 545,000 to the park. Do we have any discussion? I just don't want to go on the record that this is, that we know that this is a base and we're not leaving this park like that. I want to go on record that that is what we're doing. We're not I'm just, sure we'll talk for an hour and 45 minutes about it and everybody will be clear. Let's, let's have a bet on that. Let's go for two. Uh, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Last but not least, as far as action items, uh, infrastructure has historically met on on uh, Mondays. Um, 
I, I'll entertain what y'all think. I'll just let you know. I've never, it's, it's, it's not about me. It's not about me. I'm one of four on this committee. I've never been to committee meetings on Monday. Uh, so my schedule that I preset over the next year has been in line with what I'm used to seeing. And I, I, I maybe I should have thought differently about that, but I was, I was setting my schedule according to the finance and the legal committee because it's where I've served for so long. Um, so there are uh, at least three months this year that, that uh, it's the day that is chosen that I would not be able to be present. Um, this is a, a, a consideration I do not know. Um, I also have meetings on Monday. Meeting so Monday's Monday is a Monday's very, very, very difficult day. I'm a little confused as to why, uh, but I'm, I'm not here to say it's wrong. I just don't understand necessarily why the um, uh, public safety shifts from the second to the third, second to the third, second to the third Tuesdays, and I'm assuming so just, right after just so they don't have to meet. Tuesday is the first Tuesday Correct. after the after city council. Correct, but that, that transfers it second Tuesday, Sometimes. third Tuesday, yes. you know, back and forth, and I'm assuming that's so they don't have a meeting in the same week that they have city councils, my assumption. And then the thing about Tuesday, right now, PNZ is going underway. We have phase three and four of a 800 sub home subdivision. We need you there. And you don't have the city engineer over there on the fourth Tuesday. So they're going there right now without me. If there's, if there's questions from the commission or the public about traffic, about drainage, about density or anything else, Here's what I would like. There. Here's what I would like to do. Uh, it, it, look, look at your schedules. Let, I pulled all this up, but there's so much confusion uh, as with what we have, when and where. I just say let's right now, if, if it's if it's okay with the the committee, let's set the date for next month's committee meeting, and then let's let staff look at this and let's find a time that's going to be feasible to make it work. Is that okay? Is that a good consensus? But what day of the week do you, are you looking at? I don't want to hurt you, of course, with planning and zoning. You said you have problems with Monday. Some Mondays. Yeah. Some Mondays. Let me let's just go ahead and ask right now. Do you have a, uh, um, what? It, when is your next PNC? Ours is the fourth Tuesday. Okay. How does oh that's, that's how does everyone look for the third Tuesday of next month, which would be the twenty first of June? There's public safety. Public safety. Public safety is on the third Tuesday. Mm hmm. For some reason, I no, because of Flag Day. I've got public safety down a second Tuesday. It's the fourteenth, but it's Flag Day. I don't know if they've changed it because then, and that's a Juliana Halverson thing. You got to talk to her. She's the chair of that. So, so you don't. Are used they changing it? To, she's used to doing it on the second Tuesday, as I understand. Is that correct? Well, this is her first time, so she can't get used. To I know I was there last week, but I can't remember if I was there Tuesday or Wednesday. I was there at the last meeting, and I don't think anything was said about changing the meeting, so they should yeah, have nothing said the about meeting. changing the meeting. I wasn't there because I was on holiday. How, how, do, how does everyone feel on the 21st? Any I'm conflicts, Councilor Arnold? I'm good. He's I, don't know if I'll be I'll back. Be I don't know if I'll be back, but when I'll be on back. the phone. If, if okay, you'll be able to join? If I'm not, if I'm not back. Can we just do that by consensus then? That, uh, 4, 430? 430. With, which is that's the best okay 4 30. um i don't get off till four o'clock and so except for in the summer 4 30 on the 21st of june and then that'll give staff to look at let's just see what we can, we can make work for everyone okay all right and uh, the only other stuff that we have here is other business non-action we've got department reports do we have anything we need to hear no typically mr chairman uh at this at this committee the department heads do not do any reports. They're in there for you to read, and they're here. You have uh, Lorenzo Sanchez, the utility director. You have Abraham Chaparro, solid waste. Myself is engineering, and we entertain any questions you might have or not have. Councilor Best, any questions? No, sir. Councilor Arnold? I'll call you. There are questions about specific streets. So okay. Nice. okay. Councilor Moore? It would be nice, no. Okay. Do we have any public comment? Uh, Councilor Foster. Got a couple of questions. I, um, Mr. Mayhar, I spoke earlier, a while back. I've got a couple of constituents that have called about adding a speed limit sign on South Lee. And we've talked about it, and I'm not sure. Um, I can't remember, uh, Councilor Foster, where are at on South Lee? 
Well, um, there's there's one right at the Alsips by McGaffey, but then there's nothing from there all the way to, I think you get all the way up to past Second Street. So you mean South Lee between McGaffey and Lee? Yeah. I mean, McGaffey and Second. Yeah, I think several of them have wanted the speed limit sign because they're they said well, they were really glad when our our bridge was down because they didn't have that the problem. But they, they um, the other question I I went in and talked to Mr. Solis about the fiber optics. Um, I had a couple of contractors that are upset because these the fiber optics that are being laid um, for that are just being haphazardly laid. Some of the plumbers have gone in to, to uh, dig out a sewer line and fiber optics were like within an inch of the top of the soil that were feeding um, fiber optics into houses. And so um, this, I don't know if we, we have a standing policy on depth for fiber optics or for- Fiber optics is under the Plateau franchise that's doing most of the work. Uh, but these were ones coming off the branch trunk going to yeah. into the houses and they're they're not doing 90 oh, degrees the service, line. the service lines going into the houses we don't have a consistency and i've had several contractors say that once they found out that the the house has fiber optics they won't touch anything on the house because they don't know where the fiber optics are laid and um and so they're not wanting to cut into cut into the fiber optics and so um I, I don't know if we need a standing policy or if we need to have it, if it needs yeah, to be. Yeah, because our franchise agreement <clears throat> that hasn't been renewed for a while and it doesn't even, that was before fiber optics came around. But the same thing with the service line. Once it becomes a service line, like your sewer line, like your water line, and leaves the meter, that becomes a property owner. But uh, let me see, let me find the language. And yeah, the I, I will agree with you when we had it put in our home. Uh, we were sort of surprised because we thought that they would uh, take a certain route to get to the home. It made sense. Uh, but when I came home to see what had been done, they literally just cut a straight line through the middle of the yard, and it was about yeah about that deep. And so, so the, I mean, I, we're going to get to a point where you've got contractors that won't service homes because they don't know where. Yeah, let me let me check with PRC are. and see what if PRC has any regulations. Okay. Okay. Do they eight one one before they dig? Well, and that's the problem. There's not a there's not a tracer on most of those. <laughs> because they're a service line, they're not. And if they're if they're if they're servicing in the middle of my yard a sprinkler system, they're they're not going to you know uh, you know where if it's the alley, it's a different type of thing. So yeah. So yeah. All right. Thank you, Chair. Those <laughs> those were the items. Anything else? Okay. <laughs> Uh, Abraham, thank you for taking care of those constituents down there off of Lee and uh, well, that's clear in Water Four, but still, uh, there was another street. And I actually did get a phone call from someone on one of the other streets that's, that was excited about that. So that has alleviated the problems down there. We appreciate y'all's folks doing that. Okay. Anyone else? Meetings adjourned at 6:24. You locked up? I'll go to D&D. Yeah. I'm going to take a friend.